Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays with Power Tools. It's been more than six months since the last video, but I've finally done and filmed another project and I think the quality of my woodworking has advanced very nicely. Every year for Christmas my family put together wish lists so we can make sure we're in with a decent chance of getting stuff we actually want, and this year my sister put a link to a spice rack on Etsy that she had her eye on. Sadly, the exact one she found isn't on there anymore, so I can't show you, but I took a look at it and said, I could make that. So after a quick check to make sure there wasn't anything specific about that one that she really, really wanted, I started making plans. The design was to be 45cm wide and about 50cm tall, and the one I was basing it on had shelves 6.5cm deep internally, so I sketched up these diagrams in Inkscape. My original plan was to use some fairly thick wood for the shelves and to hollow out the space for the spices, leaving a lip at the front. However, I'm very glad I changed my mind about this. <laughs> Hollowing it out to a smooth finish with the router would probably have been extremely difficult. My design ideas fluctuated a bit, and I have to admit the end product was somewhat inspired by the wood I was able to find for sale. I picked up some pieces of 10mm thick off oak offcuts from eBay to use for the shelves and made the side panels out of some oak boards I bought ages ago and never got round to using. I still wanted to put lips on the front of the shelves though. I decided I could do this by cutting off strips and gluing them to the front. With all the raw materials assembled, it was time to start cutting. The small boards were about the right length to match the shelf width, so I carefully marked lines to allow me to cut the shelf base and the shelf lip on each board and then mostly ignored them and just ran my jigsaw down about halfway between them. This was quite deliberate. I knew from previous experience that jigsaws are very inaccurate, at least with my skill level. Even with a guide to run along the edge of, they tend to wander a bit, never producing a perfectly straight line. And the blade can flex, meaning that the cut might not be perfectly vertical. On a board this thin, that shouldn't matter too much, but it can be disastrous if you try to shorten a door. Once I cut the strips to approximately the right size, I made a guide out of two more pieces of the 10mm oak. This allowed me to press the straight edge of the narrow strips for the shelf fronts up against the upper part of the guide and know that the front edge of the lower guide would be in exactly the right place for the width I wanted. This allowed me to use my new toy, my router, with a flush trim bit. Flush trim bits are amazing. They have a cutting edge along most of the bit, but also a small bearing at either the top or bottom. This bearing can run along the edge of a template or guide, whilst the cutting edge cuts the workpiece to exactly the same size and shape. So, in this case, I carefully extended the router bit so that the bearing would run along the lower guide piece, meaning that the cutting edge would trim the workpiece to exactly the right size. Of course, it sounds really easy when I describe it like that, and the concept is very straightforward, but managing the clamps to keep everything held in place, but also allowing me to cut it was very awkward, especially on the shelf front pieces because they were so narrow. In hindsight, I should have started with the larger shelf bases because they would have been much easier to clamp while I was working out the technique. As it was, I ended up doing half the length, moving the clamps and then doing the other half. Still, never mind, I made it. Moving the clamps and probably the work pieces around a bit didn't matter because the guide pieces were fixed at the correct positions. I then repeated the process for the other three shelf fronts, cutting them to the required width and giving them nice straight edges. I wanted the shelf fronts to have nice rounded edges, as you can see here, to look nice and make it less likely that you'd hurt your hand grabbing something from them, so I found a suitably sized round over bit. Round over bits are also really clever. They've got a bearing on the tip like a flush trim bit, however the cutting edge is curved, so when you run them along an edge, you end up with a perfect curve. At least. If you line it up perfectly, you get a perfect curve. I swapped the bits over and adjusted the height. Now that the piece has a perfectly straight front, I can just run the router along it again to uh, give it the curve I wanted. And of course then, repeat the process on the other three pieces. Now onto the shelf bases. These are made from the other side of the 10mm sheets and all I needed to do here was cut them down to width. I adjusted my guide to the required width and ran the flush trim bit down the lengths again. Easy! Of course, the downside of routing is that it creates a lot of sawdust, but never mind, that's why I'm doing this outside. An essential part of any woodworking project is sanding. The router does make nice clean cuts, but they do still need some smoothing down. 
I started off trying to clean it up with a piece of sandpaper wrapped around an offcut of wood, but in hindsight using a powered sander is much easier and I don't know why I didn't do that to start with. I also played around with 100 grit and 400 grit sandpaper, but for this project, which is meant to look a little bit rustic, I decided that only going as far as 100 grit was fine. Once all the pieces were sanded all over to remove burrs and imperfections, I dusted them off and grabbed the wood glue. I've gathered from watching other people do this sort of thing that the correct approach is to put on far too much glue and then wipe off all the excess afterwards, so I laid down a generous splurge along the first edge and brushed it to ensure a full coverage. Then I carefully pressed it into place and placed a strip of glue along the top. This allowed me to then fit the front piece, however at this point the whole thing was very loose and slippery. I needed to clamp it into position to make sure it stayed. <laughs> this part was quite tricky as I needed to line up, line up the pieces then apply pressure without them shifting. Once a clamp is tight the pieces don't move, that's the whole point of the clamp, but that means you can't tweak the positioning, but before the clamp is tight they can shift by themselves and might also shift slightly from the force of tightening up the clamp. So it took a few goes to get it right. I then repeated the process at the other end making sure everything was lined up properly. Tightening the clamp up squeezed quite a lot of glue out from the joint, so this is expected. You want enough glue that any gaps or imperfections in the wood are filled and to ensure that there aren't any dry spots and it's a lot easier to use too much and wipe it off than it is to not use enough and then maybe even have it break later. Since I don't have a lot of the quick clamps I switch them out for G clamps. These allow me to place a lot more force on the join if I want to but they are more fiddly to use. However, since the quick clamps were already holding the shelf together, the fiddliness didn't matter. I was able to reclamp it and then reclaim the quick clamps for the next shelf. I repeated the process again, exactly as before. Glue, place, glue, place, clamp, wipe, and then again. And again. And that was my four shelves. Cut, assembled and glued. The glue takes about an hour to mostly set, but 24 hours to properly set. After that time it's probably stronger than the actual wood, so I shouldn't have to worry about it breaking there. While I was waiting for the glue to set, I started work on the side panels. These were to be made out of some much thicker oak that I'd bought with the intent of making a table, but without a deadline I just hadn't got round to it. Much as before, I measured and then rough cut it with the jigsaw. This wood was much thicker, so I went a bit more slowly. After cutting it to length, I flipped it round and took the other end to roughly 90 degrees to the side. This piece was to make both side panels, so I measured and cut it lengthways as well, just slightly over the final required width. Again, all jigsaw cuts I was considering to be very approximate and intended to tidy them up afterwards. To do this, I clamped one of the thinner pieces with a known straight edge, I checked it against the side of the big ruler, to the side piece and then ran the router along it again. I could have used the ruler as the reference edge, but I was a bit paranoid about the router bit not being 100% perfect and perhaps damaging the ruler. It's a good thing I was, as I did notice a very slight cut on the reference wood. It was a, a fraction of a millimetre deep, so it didn't matter there, but I wouldn't have wanted to do that to the ruler. I also took a big gouge out of one of them, as I didn't notice that the flush trim bit with the bearing at the top had a grub screw sticking out just above it. Oops. After doing the long sides, I had to repeat this tidying step with the ends. Unfortunately, the quick clamps didn't provide enough clamping force to stop the pieces shifting, and I ended up taking a significant chunk out of the wood where the guide slipped. And to add insult to injury, I then did exactly the same at the other end. Don't worry though, it wasn't as serious as it looks. Another slight problem was that the flush trim bit wasn't quite long enough to do the whole panel in one cut. Fortunately, once I'd established the straight line in the top half, I could use that as a reference to finish the cut, but I was pushing the limits of what my tools are capable of. So yes, I needed to do something about that gouge in the end of the panel. I had been planning to put a curve into the top of the sides anyway, so it was all in an area that was going to be removed, it just meant the decision as to which end was the top or the bottom had been made for me. After a bit of hunting around for a suitable radius curve to use as a guide, I decided a CD would be about right. I then drew a line round it and once again rough cut it with the jigsaw. 
I could then clamp the CD in place and use it as a guide to trim to the final shape. I touched it up a bit with some freehand routing, which was absolutely terrifying, especially after the damage I'd done earlier using a guide, and then sanded them smooth. Sanding is, as I said, much, much easier with a powered sander than by hand. <laughs> I also needed to sand off some of the pencil marks from planning the table project. Now I needed to wait for the glue to set before I could continue putting things together. So, I think this makes this the ideal point to end the episode. Come back next time once the glue is all nice and solid to see where things went from here. Since I won't have any free time when it's light until next weekend, it's going to have to wait. Although, that said, there's always a bit more sanding that needs to be done. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the process here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified about part two. And while you're waiting, perhaps check out some of the other videos scattered around. I'll see you there.